Hey, I have a question about number three. So if we have these two neurons, we have to draw an arrow through these in order to show the path of the nerve impulse. So let's talk a little bit about neurons. Neurons are very, very specialized cells that are really only found in animals. We haven't really talked about too many things that are only found in animals up to this point. I would say this may be the first thing that we've really seen that are only found in animals. And their entire job is to detect and transmit signals either to other neurons or to something that is going to carry out a response, which in animals is generally muscles. Voltage potential. So what happens to, when the ions go through the channel, what happens to our voltage potential? Does it become more negative? Does it become positive? What happens to it? It becomes positive immediately nearby, right? And as we get further away, it has less and less of an effect. You with me? Yeah. Okay. So that's fast. It seems like it's going to take a lot of like a lot of work to do this, right? It's going to like take like we got to open some channels and close other channels and open channels and close other channels, right? How long does this take? We can probably find out, yeah? Can we all stand up and make a circle and hold each other's hands? Let's go. Uh, you ready? I'm going to I'll say start. Are you ready? You ready, bud? Yeah, I can do it. Start. Okay. Feel that. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm scared. All right. We all got a twist. How many of us are there today? I think there are 26 of us today. No, there's 25 of us today. All right. Let's, let's simplify this. So it's probably not three neurons. It's probably fewer than three neurons. But let's say it's just a simple sensory neuron to an interneuron to a motor neuron. All right. So in that case, it's how many neurons? If there's 25 of us today, so it's 75 neurons. Yeah. 75 neurons. And so what's 10 seconds divided by 75 neurons? What is it? What is it? What's 10 divided by 75? I don't think it's 0. 0. 0.7. 0. <laughs> what? 0. 0.13 says very right. All right, I'm going to stimulate the neuron. You're going to see an action potential come zooming down this way and you'll see what happens. So there's our action potential. And once that happens, you can see this massive change in the ions. Then we reset. Let's go in and let's take a look at what's happening up close. Notice that right now I can't stimulate the neuron again because we're in that refractory period, but now we're good again. No, they all basically work on serotonin. They just work on it in slightly different ways. Okay. Yeah. And they all essentially work by keeping serotonin in the synapse longer than it would be otherwise. And it's even crazier if you start to like broaden it to other kinds of sensation. Like your eyes are interpreting the world, interpreting you know the electromagnetic radiation coming off of the world, but that's only happening. The receipt of that is only happening in your retina. From your retina onwards into your brain, that is all just active potentials coming in. Right? And that is all being interpreted as all of the colors of things that you see around you right now. Which is wild. Right? Or like your ears. Uh, Daniel, can you read the problem, please? I'd be happy to. Great. Design an experiment to measure reaction time in humans and demonstrate the effects of a particular variable at the choice of reaction time. Excellent. 
So uh, you may be aware that reaction time. So in this lab, you're going to create a protocol to measure the time it takes for your lab partner or partners, in this case, to respond to a stimulus of your choosing. There are a million different ways to, to measure response time. I have seen, of, I have seen you know, untold number of different ways that students have come up with it from the way that this protocol is kind of directing it towards to many, many others, some of which use the various electronic devices that occupy our time. Portal to that role. What are we doing? Um, right. I didn't 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 Hey, can I have everybody's attention for a second? Can we all just look here for a second? Um, I think we're all kind of starting to go down fruitful paths. Yes? <laughs> in that, we, uh, in that we, have, we have some sort of protocol, right? We're starting to think about a variable, right? Something we will change in order to, in order to see how it affects response time. Yeah? Um, cool. I mean, I you guys doing all right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You guys doing okay? Yeah, we're doing the. So, like. No, we should probably write it all then. Yeah. So, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 Response time by doing the ruler drops. All right, so yeah, we'll call the protocol where you drop a ruler and then measure the distance that falls. We'll call that the ruler drop protocol. Very common way of measuring response time. Um, cool. What's your variable going to be? Uh, opened eyes versus closed eyes. Opened eyes versus closed eyes. Okay. How many times is each individual going to be tested? Five. Five. How many individuals are you going to test? Um, we are using the human benchmark, benchmark thing, the same thing. Yes. Cool. And we are doing um, uh, dominant hand versus recessive hand. Like, well, uh, so you're not just doing right versus left. Yeah, we're doing like the reaction time of your dominant versus the reaction time of your. Like, and you're defining right. dominant as the hand that somebody writes with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and right. There's several constants like uh, the same the same phone is going to be used in case anything like that. Uh, it's going to and it's going to be like a. We haven't determined the distance, but it's going to be the same distance above the screen each time. Oh, good. What are you guys doing? We're doing um, the ruler drop with um, either like the, an auditory signal or a visual signal. Can you explain how that's going to work? Like, what's an auditory signal? So the person's going to have their eyes closed, and it's going to be like um, someone saying like "go," and okay. they're going to drop it, and then the other one is just going to be—they're not going to say anything. They're just going to let it drop. Okay. The person can. Cool. How many trials per person? We were thinking three each. Like three, like three auditory, three, three visual, and then how many people? Um, probably between twenty. All right, it's black. It's either licorice That's or skunk spray. Oh! Skunk spray or licorice? Licorice? licorice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, need your barf. Yeah. Oh, 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 and then also, I just had a question, like, what, what is the evolutionary benefit of a system that works like this? In reverse order, shall we? I think the first one is probably easier, since we have a pretty good handle on evolution these days. Uh, what's the evolutionary benefit of a tasting system that works like we just saw? Yeah? So, if whatever you put in your mouth is a threat, then yeah. you know early on before processing and swallowing it, if it is a threat, it can harm you. Yeah, so the question is, you know, why do things taste good or not, right? So these are mo essentially modified neurons, where the, the beginning of the neurons, instead of being dendrites, they are receptors for particular molecules that show up in food. 
And when these molecules attach to those receptors, that then causes these taste buds to generate action potentials and send signals to the next neuron in the pathway. So yeah, so in vertebrates we have these big brains, which is the central unit for doing this, right? For taking information coming in from the environment, integrating it into sensation, and then using those sensations to generate responses. And we should point out that the vast majority of this happens without you thinking about it. Right. Oh, there's a Scarlett Johansson one, and then there's one where Bradley Cooper takes the pill and he all of a sudden uses like 90% of his brain. That's uh, nonsense. You're using all of your brain all of the time, right? Different regions of your brain will be used for different things. It's probably, you're probably at no point is every region of your brain equally active, but you're, all regions of your brain get used, right? So you have neurons in a, in a, in a circuit, like let's consider some sort of circuit for, for uh, a nervous impulse to travel. If like the neuron in the middle dies, but the neurons on the other side are still alive, then there does seem to be some ability for those neurons to make new connections and get involved in other pathways. And we're going to put that mouse into the, into the chair, and then we will be able to go in and look at what's actually happening in this brain under the influence of these drugs. Okay, so as we've talked about before, over this week, your brain is not just about exciting neurons, it's also about inhibiting neurons. And so before the heroin is in the mouse, or in any organism, you have these inhibitory neurotransmitters that are inhibiting dopamine from being released. So here's... I don't know what's, what's happening. So why don't you tell that we need to do like what each one Yeah? And then there's some other stuff to read here. Great. And then on page 43, that's where the activity begins. Using a Sharpie, mark the major external features that you have identified on the white swimming cap. We all just got a white swimming cap, yes? Yeah. All right? Using a Sharpie or other thing that will mark the white swimming cap, it doesn't have to be a Sharpie, it could be whatever you want, you're going to do the various things here, right? So you're going to outline the cerebral hemispheres, you're going to mark off the cerebellum, the central sulci, and the lateral sulci, yes? Here is an image showing what the left and right basically should look like, yes? The rest of today, you can still, if you still need to collect data, that is fine. Gentlemen, we're with me? Tyler, you with me? Yep. Okay. So, uh, we still need to collect data, that's fine. But then you should also start constructing posters. So, like, maybe your data collection is done in the next 15 minutes. Yeah? So you can start to work out what this poster is going to look like. So, you're going to get a big sheet of paper, right? You're going to have your claim, unsurprisingly. Yeah, you're going to have your evidence. We should probably have at least one table of data. You can have more than one. We should have, uh, so, greater than or equal to one table, greater than or equal to one graph. I think stats are probably a good idea. And then we'll have our reasoning. Please make sure, and we've had some problems with this on our transpiration lab, right? That a, if in our reasoning, we should explain how our evidence supports our claim. I could have made this. Hey, what are we doing? Right? We're going to spend the next 15 minutes involved in a silent gallery walk.
right, if you're leaving feedback, wrap it up. And then the box is on top of the laptop cart. Please put your extra notes in there and then come back next door. So first off, I mean, it was, it was obvious to me just looking at them that like they're, they are, you guys are much better at this than you used to be. And I mean, that's what I would expect to have happened over the course of the year. So I think you guys should be, should be proud of yourselves for that. What I would like you to do over the next 35 minutes is I would like you to take your poster and look at the feedback that was offered, right? Make any changes that you want to, but don't feel like you have to make all of the changes that have been suggested. Um, and then I would like you to kindly take all of the notes and put them on a sheet of paper where you list them all, yes? And just explain why you did or did not make any changes in regard to each of those notes, all right? Then make sure I have that piece of paper at the end of the day with all the notes on it, all the yellow notes. You can leave it here, okay? One thing I did notice about your posters, a lot of them didn't have your names on them. So please put your names on the posters and make sure that the document I get has everybody's name from the group on it as well. Crack a symbol, put in a symbol. Get out of here. Okay. But I knew, I knew. Shut up! Uh, yeah. Did you always do Dominic first and Nominic? Yeah, so that, I would definitely address that. I would definitely address that, yeah. Like maybe in the future you might want to randomize which one you, which one you do first. <laughs>